ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kull muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kull bid'atin dhalala and every innovation is misguidance and every destroy wa kullu dhalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said addu'a huwa al-ibadah that dua supplicating to allah is ibadah it is worship yet many of us when we make dua right away we question it's not being answered we start to hasten and we say it's not going to be answered i'm going to take matters into my own hands ibrahim ibn ibn adham he was a companion of sufyan al-thawri rahimahum allah ta'ala and he was asked about the statement of allah wa qala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum inna alladhina yastakfiruna 'an ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannam dakhirin some people asked him allah said and your lord said invoke me Believe in my oneness, Tawheed, and call, ask upon me for everything, and I will respond to your invocation. Verily, those who scorn my worship, those who do not invoke me or believe in my oneness, they will surely enter Jahannam, the hellfire, in humiliation. So they said, مَا بَالَنَا نَدْعُوا فَلَا يَسْتَجَابَ لَنَا We're making dua, and Allah is not answering our prayers. So he responded to them with ten points. for them to reflect upon so he said to them la annakum araftum allah falam tati'u because you know allah you know he exists you know he's your lord and your creator but you don't follow him and you do not obey him allah created us for one thing it is to worship him wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun allah did not create jinn or mankind except to worship him alone without any partners this was the purpose of our creation and we know it sign after sign proof after proof evidence after evidence that Allah exists and he's the one who created all this we can't even create a fly from nothing we can build tall buildings we can build airplanes but we can't even invent a little fly from nothing Allah is the only one to be worshiped the only lord of the heavens and the earth the creator of everything alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal ard في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش the one who created everything in the heavens and the earth that you see and that you don't see he created it in six days with no fatigue no stress no re- no need for rest he did not get tired he did not need to eat perfection عز وجل he created all in six days ثم استوى على العرش then he ascended above his throne in a manner which suits his majesty and this is where Allah is he's not everywhere like some deviants think his knowledge is everywhere eyesight everywhere hearing over everything but he's above his arsh separate and above his creation this is our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and on yawm al-mazid for the inhabitants of jannah may Allah make us from make us from them 
when he asks them to come to a day where they will get a better gift than they think they've gotten by all of Jannah. The day to see his face. He will call out to the people, Aina ibad al-Ladina Where are those who used to worship me? Where are those who used to obey me even though they didn't see me? And he will lift the veil from over himself so the inhabitants of Jannah can see his face. May Allah give us this beautiful gift. This is that day. Allah gave us proof after proof of His existence and His Lordship. That He's the only one we should worship. So we must ask ourselves, if we do not worship Allah the way He deserves to be, if we do not affirm His Tawheed, then why should He answer our prayers? They were asked, we make dua to Allah and He doesn't answer it. The second point, وَعَرِفْتُمُ Quran. <clears throat> you know the Qur'an, you know it, you recite it, you memorize it, but you're not acting upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةً وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says what means, and we send down the Qur'an, from the Qur'an, that which is a healing and a mercy for those who believe in Tawheed and they act upon it. We know the Qur'an. It's a miracle given to our Prophet ﷺ. And Nabi al-Ummi, he could not read, he could not write. Allah gave it to him over 23 years, from the age of 40 to 63. It came down in its patches. We recite this Qur'an, but we don't act up upon it. وَلَكِنْ هَذَا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ It's the book of Allah. حَبْلَ Allah, The rope of Allah. الْمَنْدُودْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ It is outstretched from the heavens to the earth. فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ So hold on to it and cling to it. This is the, these are the words of Allah, the speech of Allah. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ Allah says, what means, O you believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Qur'an gives us the commands. وَهُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيَّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ It is the guidance for mankind. With clear proofs and evidences for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. It is the speech of Allah. Allah spoke these words. And this does not liken him to his creation in one way whatsoever, in one way whatsoever, in any way whatsoever. But this is the Quran that we've been given. The speech of Allah, the final message to all of mankind. <coughs> correcting what people altered before. Allah promising that it will never be changed or corrupted. <laughs> We will protect it from corruption for all time. Why might the dua not be answered? He said, وَعَرِفْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَلَمْ تُحَارِبُوهُ وَوَافَقْتُمُوهُ He said to them, you know shaytan, you know he exists. Allah titled him al-'adu'u al-mubin, the avowed enemy. He's not hiding his enemyship. He's known, he wants to destroy you, he wants to ruin you, and ruin your life, and ruin your akhirah. This is what he's out to do. He's an avowed enemy. But instead of fighting him, waging war against shaitan himself, you have agreed with him and followed what he has whispered to you and followed what he tries to lead you towards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warned us, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ He said, indeed shaitan is to you an open enemy, so treat him as an enemy, any human enemy of yours. If you saw them at a distance, you would prepare for battle. If it was with weapons, you'd get your weapons on you. If it was you wanted to secure your property or your home, you'd go and secure it. If you saw him a mile or two away, you wouldn't wait till he gets closer. But Shaytan, he comes, he comes with us, we enter our homes, we don't remember Allah. Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala rabbana tawakkalna. The dua to enter the home so the jinn and the shayateen don't enter with you. He sits at our tables because we forget to say Bismillah before we eat because our hard work put that food on the table. That's our thinking. Your hard work was only given to you as a means by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to put food on that table. Allah is the one who provided you that food. We know shaitan, but we don't fight him. We don't treat him as an enemy. We take him as our guide sometimes, following our desires. And yet what? You think Yom al-Qiyamah, you're going to say, Allah, He told me to do this. He's the one who led me down this path. 
You ain't going to be able to say that. كما قال الله كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان أكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين. Shaytan on that day, he tried and pointed, he whispered it to me, he led me down this path, I wanted to be good. Allah ain't going to accept it. He gave the example where he said, the, their allies deceive them like shaitan. When he says to man, disbelieve in Allah, and when man disbelieves, he says, Ana bari I'm free from you, man. Shaytan himself will say, Inni akhaf Allah Rabbil Alameen. I fear Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, the Lord of all that exists. Yet he's destroyed even though he has that belief because of his disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fourth, why might your dua not be accepted? Rahim ibn Adham, he said, وَعَرَفْتُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَلَمْ تَتَّبِعُوا سُنَّتَهُ You know the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you're not following his sunnah. This shouldn't be the message every single week. How we've abandoned the sunnah of the best of mankind, al uswatul hasana the best example, the best role model. And we've taken other examples and role models that are way worse to be the people we admire and that we aim to be like. We know the sunnah, we love, we claim we love the Prophet ﷺ, yet we abandon his sunnah. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لَا تَتْرُونِي كَمَا أَطْرَةَ النَّصَرِ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُهُ فَقُلُ عَبْدَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, do not exaggerate in your praising of me. Like the Christians have Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam. For indeed I am Allah's slave and servant, so call me Allah's slave, servant and messenger. Yet we'll see those who say that they love the Prophet by celebrating his birth. Or by doing things that weren't even commanded by him. The only way you prove your love to the Prophet is by implementing his sunnah. Without any doubt. Allah many times in the Qur'an commanded us with this. مَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi gives you, take it. Whatever he prohibits you from, stay away from it. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِي يُوحَىٰ Allah said, what means the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not speaking or saying or doing anything in his life out of his own desire. He's only doing and saying what is a wahi revealed to him, his revelation. The ahadith are wahi. His actions, how he prayed, is all wahi, is all revelation given to him and commanded of him on how to do those things. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي He stressed when there's ikhtilaf and the people are going into different groups and making different factions. What is upon you is my sunnah. He said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي what is upon you is to follow my sunnah. Preserved in the books. Don't be foolish and think you have some like intellect beyond means and you start arguing, well, I don't know if I trust that hadith. You will lose on Yom Al-Qiyamah. This is a foolish, evil way of thinking. It's not someone who just gathered a book and said, this is your Prophet's sunnah. Allah has protected it like He has protected the Qur'an. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ means, upon you is my sunnah if you want to be saved. أَمَرَ صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُونِ أُصَلِّي He commanded, pray as you've seen me praying. praying. أَمَرَ خُدُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكُكُمْ He said, make hajj, take your hajj rights from me. And the likes of all of these matters. Yet, we're so bold and proud. We have egos. I'm not going to change the way I've been praying. I've been praying this way my whole life. I don't think my beard looks clean, so I'm going to trim it and shape it or shave it because I, I think that looks cleaner. And the likes of all of these matters. I'm not going to say ameen out loud because uh, none of the people in my med have said that when we have hadith, after hadith, after hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ commanded and the companions who followed the sunnah better than we ever will said ameen out loud after the imam said ameen in the out loud prayers. It's a level of kibir. You don't want to acknowledge it. You don't want to admit it. But it's arrogance that you want to abandon the sunnah because of culture or nationalism or what your father taught you or the likes of this when you're proven with something else. Why might your dua not be accepted? He said, you claim you want jannah. You know that it exists. You know Allah has created it for the muttaqeen. 
For the muttaqeen, those who have taqwa, those who fear Allah, who keep their duty to Allah, mafaza, a great success and reward. What is it? It's Jannah. This mafaza is Jannah. So we know that we want paradise, but we do not act to gain it. Some of us don't even ask for it. We should want al firdaus the highest of Jannah. But what are we doing to get it? It's not just, I'm a Muslim, give it to me. It doesn't work that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا لَنْهَارِ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ Allah said, what means verily those who believe and do righteous deeds. For them will be gardens under which rivers flow, Jannah, paradise, this is the great success. He didn't say for just those who believe, or those who say, he said, for those who do the righteous actions, and iman tasdiq al qalb, iman being this great success will come with the belief in the heart. Wal qawl al bil lisan, and the statement of the tongue, wal amal bil jawarih, and the actions of the limbs. So don't slip into one of those Muslims who, yeah, he just says, I believe and does do no, and doesn't do no good actions. For us to get anything of status or success in this life. It doesn't come to you free, you have to earn it. And Jannah is the same way. You don't get a doctor without going to school, test after test after test. You don't get to open a store without doing 5,000 things so that you can get a permit from a city and then, and then you go and you get it. It all takes work and effort and time and Jannah is nothing less. Why your du'a might not be accepted, Ibrahim ibn Adham, he said, وَعَرِفْتُمْ النَّارِ فَلَمْ فَلَمْ تَهْرَبُوا مِنْهَا You know the hellfire. You know it exists. The heat in the summer is a reminder. That's from the fire, fire of hell. The cold, the severe cold in the winter is from the fire, the breath of Jahannam. This is a breath of Jahannam when it's cold and it's bitter and it pierces you. This is a, a reminder that Jahannam is taking a breath because parts of it were eat, eating each other up. You know the fire exists. But you're not running away from it. You're not fleeing from it. You're not doing things to prevent yourself from going there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا النَّارِ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ عِدَّتْ بِالْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means? So fear the hellfire. Its fuel is not wood and gasoline. Is a, its fuel will be men, mankind, men and women, and stones. It's prepared for those who disbelieve or those who earn punishment. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And Allah says, what means? Except for them who طَغَى Who transgress the bounds set by Allah With not just kufr, with oppression, with evil deeds, disobedience to Allah And they prefer the life of this dunya Verily his abode will be in the hellfire أخواني أخواتي في الله Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّ سَتَفْتَرِقُ عَلَى ثَلَاثَ وَسَبِعِينَ فِرْقَ أَوْ مِلَّ he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this ummah will divide into 73 different sects and groups, all of them in the fire except for one. In one narration it says, Al-Jama'ah, the group, the main group. This doesn't just get delineated by saying, I'm a Sunni. In another narration he clarified it, مَا أَنَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِ أَوْ مَا أَنَ عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمَ أَصْحَابِ What I am upon today and my companions. This is the ones, this is the group that Allah will save. Now the others, they may still go to Jannah after some time in Jahannam. Who wants that? Who wants a second of that? <coughs> so fear, fear Allah with respect to this. Number eight, وَعَرِفْتُمَ الْمَوْتِ فَلَمْ تَسْتَعِدُّوا لَهُ He said, or he said, why your du'a may not be accepted? Indeed, you know, you say that death is true, that we will all die, but what have you done to prepare for it? You've done nothing to prepare for it. You act as if you can escape it. What, you, what, you have, what have you prepared in terms of correct belief? Aqidah, your tawheed. What have you prepared for it in terms of good deeds? So that the angel of mercy takes you and wraps you with shrouds from Jannah and hanut from the hanut of Jannah and perfumes from the perfumes of Jannah instead of the angel uh, of punishment taking you. Our Prophet said, frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures. We laugh here and we're all about entertainment and fun times and this and that, but you have to admit that death can come to any one of us at any time. No one is guaranteed a minute from now. 
young and old, healthy, ill, strong, weak. When it's written, it's written. Allah said, indeed, that death you flee from and you try to avoid, it's going to find you. And then you'll be returned to the knower of the seen and the unseen and he'll tell you what you used to do. Next, وَتَرَقْتُمْ عَيُوبَكُمْ وَاشْتَغَلْتُمْ بِعْيُوبِ النَّاسِ You have let, you busied yourself. This is the reason why dua isn't accepted. You busied yourself with the faults of other people instead of looking at your own faults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَنْ عَمَلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا Allah says what well, means whoever does good, his own soul will benefit. Whoever does evil, his own soul will pay the price. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we busy ourselves. Look at what this person is doing. Look at what they're doing. Subhanallah, astaghfirullah, and we have our own faults. But are you looking at them? Do you list them? Do you look yourself in the mirror and question why you did such and such or said such and such in your day? We busy ourselves with other spots instead of looking at our others. Last two, he mentioned, وَأَكَلْتُمْ نِعْمِ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ تُؤَدُّوا شُكْرَهَا You eat what Allah has provided you, but you do not thank Him for it. And we've gotten our thanks down to Alhamdulillah. Saying it quickly. It doesn't pierce the heart. We don't really acknowledge that even though I worked and I got the paycheck, cashed it, bought the food, brought it home, cooked it and put it on the table. It's Allah who gave you all of those means. You did nothing. Nothing. It's all a ni'mah. It's all a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we eat what Allah has provided. Huwa razzaq. He is the provider for everything and everyone. Allah is the one who provides. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam from the, the quote from the, the Quran, from the ayah, he confirmed and this was a prophet. And he was given in great status. A great status. He said, Allah, he is the one who feeds me and gives me drink. Never attribute any success you have. Money, food, clothing, homes, property, whatever, lineage, whatever you want to do. It's none of it's from you. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not need to give it to you. It's considered a ni'mah, a blessing, a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and lastly, when he was asked, <clears throat> Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, when he was asked why my dua might not be accepted, he said, وَدَفَنْتُمْ <clears throat> الْأَمْوَاتِ فَلَمْ تَعْتَبِرُوا He said, you bury your dead, but you do not take a lesson from it. We know, as Allah said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَاءَةَ الْمَوْتِ Every soul will taste death. We know when we're burying our loved ones, the next one could be me, could be you, could be any one of us. That the akfan, the sheets, next up in line, have your name written on it. You just can't see the name. But Allah already knows those are going to be used to wrap you. We bury our dead and we do not learn a lesson from it. <coughs> it is a remembrance, a lesson for us to remember death in and out of our prayers to remember the barzakh, the life, that next life after you leave this dunya, when your soul is reunited with your body and you're questioned in the grave from Munkar and Nakir, man rabbuk, ma adinuk, man aladhi bu'rita ilaykum, wa ma amaluk. When the two angels, Munkar and Nakir, will come and question you in the grave, sitting you up, stern, they're not there to smile with you. And they will sit you up, firm, and shake you. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is your prophet? What were your actions? And insha'Allah, we're from those who say, my Lord is Allah, Rabbi Allah, Deen al-Islam, Nabi Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Insha'Allah, we're from the ones who say, my Lord is Allah. My, my religion is Islam. My Prophet is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they will ask, well, what are your actions? Qara'atu kitab Allah. Wa amantu bih wa saddaqt. I read the book of Allah. I believed in it. Wa saddaqt. I affirmed it to be the truth. I recognized it as the truth. How can we answer this if we never reflect upon it? How can we answer this if we don't take the lessons from the death to shock us back from dunya towards our focus which is the akhir? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know this. The fajr, the corrupt one, as we were reading in Surah Thalatha when we go over the halakas on Sunday nights, the corrupt one, when he says, ha ha la adri la adri, when he says, I don't know the answers to these questions, when he's asked about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he'll say, Ha ha la adri. I used to say, I used to say Prophet Muhammad, I used to say Muhammad because other people were saying it. 
And then he'll be hit with a sledgehammer on his head in his grave. Don't ask how. We don't know. That's the life of the barzakh. And there, he will screech so loud that if the humans living would hear it, they would die out of ter- terror, out of fear. Just by hearing this scream. And then Jahannam will blow some heat and fire. Yeah, and heat from the fire into his grave. And that will be his situation until the day of resurrection. Then the day of resurrection comes. Scales will be come out. Our deeds will be made into weights. Again, don't ask how. Allah is capable of everything. You walk over a salat if you're a believer. May Allah make some getting over. If you cross, alhamdulillah, you're going to Jannah. It's as sharp as a sword, finer, a sword, finer than a hair. But you could be snatched and dragged into Jahannam. Ikhwani, alhamdulillah, we bury our dead, but we never learn a lesson. Some brothers over here, the brothers being buried. Some may be crying because it's their lo- close loved one or they have a special relationship with them. Some brothers over there smoking. Some over there are ch- laughing it up. Some over there are planning their next business deal. Death was given to us as a lesson for us to learn a wake-up call. If you're awake, Allah is trying to help you. So take heed of it. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَدَعُوا اللَّهِ يَرْحَمْ لَكُمْ بِنُونَ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as a recap, especially for those who came late, a very important thing. Many of us question why our du'a is not being accepted. When one of the companions of Sufyan al Thawri, this is third generation, رحمهم الله تعالى, he was asked, Allah said he accepts the du'a, we make du'a, it's not being accepted or answered. So he said the 10 points we shared. You know Allah, but you do not obey Him. You recite the Qur'an, but you don't act upon it. You know shaitan, but you've agreed with him instead of waging war with him. You proclaim you love Prophet Muhammad wasallam, but you abandon his sunnah. <clears throat> you claim your love for Jannah and that you want to go there, but you're not acting in the way to get you there. You claim your fear and not wanting to go to the hellfire, but you are... You're not protecting yourself from that by not doing, by doing what you're supposed to be doing, or by not doing what you're not supposed to be doing. You say that death is true, but you haven't prepared for it. You busy yourselves at the, with the faults of other people and other people's mistakes and sins, instead of just looking at your own sins and your own faults. You eat what Allah gives you and provides for you, but you don't thank Him for it, at least sincerely. And you bury your dead, but you don't take a lesson from it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said at the end of one of the, the famous hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, where he said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 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 he at the end of this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he gave to the companions the remembrance of a man who came, he's been traveling. Uh, he's dirty, he's dust colored from the dirt. Travel has taken its effect on him, he's tired, he's weak. He raises his hands to Allah, making dua. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, saying, My Lord, my Lord. But his food is haram, his drink is haram. His clothing is haram. His nourishment is haram. So it is said, how is he to be answered in such a state? When you're weak, when you're traveling, when you're in a state of weakness, when you raise your hands, when you say, Rabbi, Rabbi, my Lord, my Lord, these are all things that should help a du'a be answered. But if we're in haram, inside of Arabic, if our food is coming because of haram means, if our drink is coming because of haram means, if our clothing is coming because of haram means, you're buying it with haram money, money that was earned in an Islamically unacceptable way. You're selling something haram, you're lying about something you're selling, and it's sold even if it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good product and it's allowed. You're lying saying, oh, I bought it for you know, 20 bucks and you really bought it for 5 cents and you sell it for so much. All of this stuff, you're making that money haram. Why would Allah accept your dua in that state? So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember Allah's saying, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah says what means, and when my servants ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about me, tell them, answer them, I am indeed near. 
Allah, He's above His arsh, separate from His creation. But He can hear you. He knows what you're thinking. He's closer to you than your jugular vein in terms of knowledge of everything that happens within you. But He is above His throne, separate from His creation. But tell them, I'm near, I will respond to the dua of the supplicant when He calls on me. So let them obey me and believe in me so they may be led aright. This is the challenge. Obey Allah and believe in Him and we will be read alight, alright, led aright. So do not fool yourselves and question Allah. Well, I gave sadaqah, why is this happening? I gave, uh, you know, I, thought, I pray all my prayers, I go to the masjid, uh, why is this happening? I made hajj this year, why is this happening to me? Questioning Allah where you don't know. Always go back to that ayah. Where Allah says, and perhaps you think something is good for you, but it's really bad for you. Perhaps you think something's bad for you, but it's really good for you. Allah knows and you don't know. When you think something's not being answered, question what you may be doing in your life. But also know that if you're doing things correctly and you're following what we mentioned, Allah may not answer you because He's going to give you something better in Jannah. Allah may not answer you because what you're asking for will be shut, will be evil for you. Allah may not answer you because He wants you to keep calling upon Him, relying on Him, so He can give you something better than you're asking for. Never think it's that simple. May Allah make us from those who follow what it takes to get our dua or supplications answered and make us from those who obey Him and believe in Him so He gives us the best of Jannah. Allahumma khil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahya'i wa al-Amwat inna ka anta sami'a al-Qalib al-Mujib al-Ta'awad ya maqallib al-Qulub kitab al-Qulub al-Aladhin Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat ya amma yusifun al-Salamun ala al-Mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala al-Mina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in